Hey guys, my name is Steve Palasak. I'm a fisherman up in the kind of the Midwest and up in the West Michigan area. Um, I just joined a bass club last year um, and I'm kind of starting this YouTube channel to, to let you guys kind of follow my evolution as a, a bass fisherman and, and a hunter and, and all the other things that I do in the outdoors. Um, so you'll probably see some videos from hunting, um, a few videos from my ski trips out west or even up north here in Michigan. Um, but the main reason that I'm starting this YouTube channel is to share with you uh, my fishing um, fishing evolution kind of thing to show you how I grow as a fisherman. Um, I have a very small boat right now, about a 16 and a half foot. It's a sea nymph. Um, it's a tiller steer, uh, kind of on a savings plan with my wife um, for five years or so to, to try and get a, an upgrade in the boat um, so that I can be a, a boater in the bass club because currently I'm a, a co-angler. Um, I don't I don't necessarily trust my live well to keep fish alive for two hours, let alone through an eight hour tournament. So that's some of the things that the reason I'm starting this this channel. Um, and right now in particular, I'm getting ready to upgrade this boat. Right now I have a 12 volt trolling motor system um, and I've just uh, just started to upgrade it to a 24 volt. Um, I haven't quite reinstalled my batteries from putting them away for the winter last year. So what I'm going to do today, is hook you guys up and show you kind of what tools I'm using, um, what the system actually, how it should be wired. So one other thing I invested in, besides the extra battery for the 24 volt system, is I bought a Cabela's. Uh, I've got it right sitting back here. Where is it? <clears throat> oh, it's right here. The uh, uh, two bank charger. So what this will do is this will help condition my batteries, uh, keep them in good shape the whole time when I'm not on the water fishing. That way, hopefully, the, the life of the batteries will be longer, so I won't have to buy new batteries as often, and it'll help keep my batteries healthy and last longer while I'm on the water. So hopefully, this will help me with that, and um, I'll keep updated on this as we go um, through the years to let you know how I like it, if I don't like it, if I do kind of thing, because right now, what I have to do is hook up a portable battery charger, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Um, it... Uh, it only charges one battery at a time, where right now I'll be able to just plug in um, that two bank charger and also plug in that separate charger and I'll be able to charge all three of my batteries at the same time and you know with the two trolling motor batteries and that single cranking battery that I have for my motor. Um, and as you can see the motor on the boat, it is a 25 horse tiller steer, but I do have the electric start option on it which is very nice, especially on those cold mornings when I haven't started the batter or started the, the motor in a very long time that'll definitely help uh, help get that thing started in the morning so alright guys so this is basically all the tools that I need um, there may be some miscellaneous other small tools I'll need but these are the main tools you're gonna need for pretty much any electrical work that you're gonna do on your boat so the first thing here is a pair of um, these are cutters and and crimpers for the insulation uh, for the any connectors you have to put onto your your wire these are cutters and they'll actually help these are much sharper so they'll help with stripping the wire so that you have the the bare conductors on the inside obviously you need a drill for drilling holes <clears throat> this DMM that I have is just a cheap craftsman version um, I'm just I, I bought that cheap when I bought my home and it's been a great tool for troubleshooting and it'll it'll help us here with the boat because what we want to do is make sure we're getting the proper voltage to each connection before we plug in our uh, our high-end electronics so we don't ruin anything. The next thing is a nice drill index uh, for drilling some holes if you're going to use sheet metal screws or bolts or anything like that. Um, the next is, is more materials and tools but we've got some splicers, we got a couple of different kinds of connectors, a circuit breaker which is very important, the new 24 volt trolling motor I'm picking up needs a 60 amp circuit breaker the 30 amp fuse that I've got is definitely not going to cut it um, so that's that's definitely going to be replaced so I don't ruin that nice new trolling motor and then you'll need some wire to make the 24 volt conversion as well as some other wiring changes for um, extensions you might need because of the batteries being in different locations because now there's three instead of just the two batteries so. okay so I figured out the way I want to mount this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my my battery charger and mount it way back here so it's out of the way as far as I can. Put my cranking battery so it's very close to this 
but it's not obstructing it. And then these two batteries, I'm gonna put the long way along here so I still have room to swivel in this chair. And I have plenty of access to these terminals along this wall here so I'm not running the wires back and forth and daisy chaining too much. So that'll be, I think, the best way to do it. And one thing that I forgot to, to talk about earlier in the materials and tools section is um, how it, critical it is for you guys to use shrink tubing. Nobody should ever use wire nuts when they're wiring up a boat or a trailer or anything because of the elements that they're exposed to. If you use wire nuts, you know, you might save 15 cents and, you know, five minutes of your time for each joint or each uh, connection, but in the long run, it's going to last a lot longer and you're going to have fewer problems when you're out and you actually need everything to work. So, so that's a really good tip, you know, just, just spend the extra, you know, five bucks to buy a big roll of, of shrink tubing and a little bit extra time to put that shrink tubing on and, and you'll save a lot of, of trouble in the field. together and it's going pretty well but one thing I noticed was I pulled the, the wire up for my, uh, uh, my trolling motor wire and it seems to be quite a bit heavier than the wire that I bought and the wire I'm using for this jumper and what I actually think it is, is I think the stuff I bought I know the stuff I bought is 10 gauge and the stuff right here is either 8 or 6 gauge so I just always want to take a look on your phone or on the internet and check what the current you're going to be using, which like I said before, my circuit breaker is rated for 60 amps based on the manufacturer recommendation. So I want my wire to be able to carry that same amount of current or else this coating may start melting and could cause a fire if you run more current than what it's, what it's rated for. And I just looked online and this 8 gauge wire, this 10 gauge wire is rated for 52 amps and this is a 60 amp circuit breaker so it's possible that if this were pulling somewhere between 52 and 60 amps it could start melting the coating on this wire and cause a fire and I don't want to take that chance so what I have to do is I have to go back to the store and get some 8 gauge wire because 8 gauge I looked up on the table and that's rated for 75 amps so that'll be plenty to cover the safeties here that I've got and not melt the wire um, so I'm gonna have to, to pause here for today and pick up another day once I get the correct parts. Thanks a lot guys and remember you always have to stay safe when you're working on this. So this will be to be continued and I'll, uh, I'll finish this video up once I get the correct parts. Thanks everyone.